Hi, I'm Chuck with Razorback Off-Road. We're out here today in, uh, in the beautiful mountain home desert to introduce a new product that we've come up with. And like all of our products, this one was born out of necessity. A few months back, I was out here in the desert, not far from here, and, and got stuck and really had a hard time finding anything to hook my winch to to winch myself out. And we really felt there should be a better way, so we set about trying to design a, a, a way to quickly anchor yourself. So what we came up with is our Razorback off-road recovery shovel. And its design has a lot of features in it. Its primary function is to be used as a recovery shovel, which I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes. But I thought I would just kind of talk you through some of the options that we did. So the first thing we did here in the handle is we put a half inch uh, drive on here. And that's gonna allow you to put a half inch drive socket on. So you can use this thing as a lug wrench if you need to loosen or tighten, change a tire, tighten your lug nuts, whatever. And uh, I think that's just a really neat feature that we've got on there. The other thing we've done is we've added a steel slug in here so you could use this side as a hammer if you need to pound on something. Now as we move down into the real, uh, I guess you will, the meat and potatoes of the shovel, you'll see we've got some really nice um, teeth on here to help you get a good footing when you're putting this into the ground. You'll also notice we've reinforced the neck portion of the shovel right here, and that's to really give it a lot of strength when you're um, pulling against this, as you'll see here a little bit in the video. We also have a hole here where you'll put the shackle that's included with the shovel. But I wanna draw your attention to these serrations that we've done on the top and the bottom. So it will cut through wood, but its primary focus is when you're digging into the ground that it'll help you to saw through the root zone if you have a big root in the way. Another feature of it is these two little divots on here that you can use to get underneath your tent stake if you need to pry your tent stakes out. Um, all in all, we just wanted to build the absolute best off-roading shovel we could do it. We also put in these notches here in the top of it that align very well with our Razorback Off-Road uh, Universal Tool Mount. As you can see, I've got another shovel here on my Ranger. And uh, I was actually out elk hunting this weekend. You see it's dirty. We actually used it up there quite a bit. Um, but this notch is designed to fit between these two bolts so that when you get it secured in here, the shovel doesn't rotate back and forth. So it's a really nice option. One thing I'd like to go into before we start winching on this vehicle is to really talk about being able to store this shovel. I think using our universal tool mount is probably the best way there is to store this. Now, this thing isn't just designed for our, our cargo racks. You can mount this to any flat surface, so just about anything you can think of, and then you have your shovel very secure. So I feel like I've done enough talking about the shovel. Let's go out and do some winching so you can see this thing in the real world. All right, well now we're out to the fun part of the video, which we're actually gonna start winching on this Ranger. And that's, that's a pretty heavy vehicle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lock the rear axles and simulate that you're trying to pull yourself you know, out of a hole or out of a mud, uh, mud hole or something like that. But inevitably the question's gonna come up, how much or how hard can I winch against the shovel? And I can't answer that because it depends on the, the ground soils and all that. What I can tell you is you have a better chance of getting out with this than not having anything at all to pull against. So this is just one more tool for your toolbox to help you in recovery. I'm gonna have Jake come in here in just a little bit. He's the uh, primary engineer on this and he's gonna be my anchor man and we're gonna show you how this works. But one of the things that I wanted to tell you is the further you can get away from the uh, casualty when you're winching or your buggy, the, the better off this thing's gonna work. And that has to do with line angle. And if any of you wanna learn a little more about winching, at the end of this video, we're gonna go back to the shop and I'm gonna try to talk to you a little bit about winching because I have a pretty good handle on that. So we've installed our shackle. Now we're gonna go ahead and 
set this shovel in the ground, but one of the things that I want you to know is this shovel, we've designed the angle of this to self-bury itself, and you're really gonna see that once we start winching. You know, uh, I wish I had a, a disclaimer to insert here from liability, and, uh, and you know, obviously you need to follow all these precautions when you're using your winch, read your owner's manual, um, and just do everything you can to be smart about uh, winching yourself out. Now we're ready to engage the rigging. So here we go. Notice the self berry design, how it's burying itself in the ground. And now the rig's starting to slide towards us. We're dragging the back of it and the shovel's just burying itself into the ground. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video we've done on our Razorback recovery shovel. As you can see, it's quite impressive. Um, you know, we were able to winch the Ranger North Star full-size machine with the rear brakes lock and drag it. When we hooked onto the 900 trail machine, we just had total command of it. Um, what we found through our testing is we've been able to generate a little over a thousand pounds of resistance in most cases. Um, so that's like putting a, a thousand pound anchor in front of you and winching against it. Of course, as I said earlier, all that depends on soil conditions, how big a person you have on the other end. But like I also said, you're much better off. You have a bigger chance of getting out with that shovel than without it. As you can see, there's just nothing out here to tie to, and that's why we developed it. I also want to point out that this is a limited production run shovel. We're building it because I felt a need for it for my machines. My friends that have been using it absolutely love them. Um, we've had people wanting them for Christmas gifts and Father's gifts, so we are going into production on these, but we're just not sure how many we're going to be producing. I wanted to get that point across. I also wanted to mention we're going to do a quick video at the end of this about winching. Nothing fancy, but just share some knowledge that I've got on winching. And uh, I hope to see you out on the trail. Well, we've just came in from outdoors. And as I mentioned in that video, we're going to talk a little bit about winching and try to share some knowledge that I've learned over the years. The question came up in here while we were making the video, who certified me to talk to you about winching? And I wanted to let you know for about 15 years, I owned my own towing company. I also had an aircraft recovery business. And for about 10 years, I was a rec master instructor. So I went all over the country teaching winching classes, actually throughout the United States. So I feel qualified to talk to you about winching. To me, it was a big passion of my life. It's really gives you a lot of uh, comfort when you start to understand these basic principles of winching. So here we go. Okay, we're gonna go home. So, the main discipline that I was taught that you really need to remember is that the golden rule to winching. And what is the golden rule to winching? The golden rule to winching is lines to the load. I hope you guys can see this but it's lines to the load. Don't ever forget that. So the question is, what do I mean by that? So we're gonna pick a, pick a good color here that should show up. Well, we'll go ahead and go with black. So if this is the front of your razor or Can-Am, whatever it is you have, here's your winch. And we're gonna take the winch line out and we're gonna hook onto a load. And let's just say this load weighs a thousand pounds. So this is your machine. 
This is your winch, this is your line, winch line, and this is the load. So the load is a thousand pounds. So if you engage the winch and this load starts to move, the load on this line will be 1,000 pounds. And it's that simple. So why is that important? Well, let's say your winch can only pull 500 pounds or your winch line is only rated for 500 pounds working load limit. How do we reduce line load? We're gonna draw another scenario here where you have your machine, here's your winch. We're gonna line out to the same load. This load here has a thousand pounds on it and we're gonna hook a snatch block on it and we're gonna run the winch line back and we're gonna hook it to the front of your machine. Now, what is the golden rule to winching? Lines to the load. The question is, how many lines do we have going to the load? The answer is two, which means there's 500 pounds on this line and 500 pounds on this line. And that means your winch, your winch is pulling 500 pounds and you've anchored 500 pounds to the other side of your machine. That is how you reduce line load or you multiply winching effort. I'm gonna show you just one more thing we could do. Well, let's talk about this. Let me go back. Here's where things start to get confusing to people. And I'm gonna go nice and slow. Let's say you come and you got a winch and hook to a tree. Here's a big anchor tree. And you run through a snatch block and you come down to the load. And the load still weighs a thousand pounds. The question is, how many lines do we have to the load? And the answer is one. There's only one line touching the load. So the line load here is a thousand pounds and the line load here is a thousand pounds. And that means your Razor or Can-Am or Kawasaki, whatever you have, has, is gonna have a thousand pounds of line load on it. So how do you reduce line load? Well, you need to increase lines to the load. How can we do that? Well, let's just look at another scenario. So we come off the front of our winch we're gonna come down here to that same tree, have a snatch block. We're gonna to hook to this same anchor, or this load of a thousand pounds of resistance we need to overcome. We're gonna put a snatch block in the line and we're gonna go back to the tree. Now, what is the, how many lines going to the load? What's the golden rule to winching? Lines to the load. There's two lines going to the load. 500 or a thousand divided by two, that means there's 500 on this line, 500 on this line, 500 here, and that means your machine will have a load against it of 500 pounds. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Where a lot of people get confused is they believe that running the line through this multiplies effort or reduces line load, and it does not. The only way a snatch block will help you multiply effort is if it travels. The snatch block has to move with the load. If it doesn't move with the load, it's not multiplying effort. This is a fixed snatch block. It's not going to move, it's just going to spin. This snatch block right here is a traveling block. It's going to move and so it'll reduce effort. This one is fixed. It's not going to reduce effort. This snatch block here is a traveling block. It's going to reduce effort because it moves with a load. So always try to remember that, that a fixed block does nothing but do a direction change. And a running block multiplies effort or reduces line load is the way I like to think about it. So another thing that we wanna talk about 
I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Now what I want to take a moment and talk a little bit about is wire rope or synthetic rope or your winch line. And that's very important to understand the rating of the winch line on your vehicle. And the reason that's important is moat or well, all wire rope or all synthetic rope is going to have a minimum ultimate load you may see it written as M-U-L, and that means minimum ultimate load. You may also see the term braking strength. You get the idea, or you might see just U-L, which is ultimate load. And what that means is the manufacturer says they've took your winch line that they sell and they pulled it in a machine and they've recorded the times that it breaks. And let's say one winch line broke at 11,000 pounds and one broke at 10,800 pounds and one broke at 10,500 and one broke at 12,000. And then after all of these testings, one broke at 10,000 pounds. They're going to say the minimum ultimate load of this winch line is 10,000 pounds. So the ultimate load is 10,000 pounds. So if you put a force of 10,000 pounds on it, very high probability that that number or slightly above it, that wire rope or synthetic rope is going to fail. So the winch line manufacturers want to put that rope in the hands of, of people and they want to give it a factor of safety so that um, you don't overload the winch line. Now wire rope factors of safety depend on the industry they're being used in, depend on the manufacturer, there's a lot of variables, but for today's lesson, we're going to say that the factor of safety so the safety factor is four. So what the manufacturer is going to do is they're going to take 10,000 pounds divided by four, and they're going to give it a working load limit of 2,500 pounds. So if you see the term working load limit, the manufacturer saying, hey, you can take this winch line and pull on it all day, every day, use it in uh, as long as you don't abrade it or damage it, as long as you don't put a force of more than 2,500 pounds on it, everything's going to be fine because its minimum braking strength is 10,000 pounds. It's very important that you understand what the working load limit of your rope is and you never exceed that number. It doesn't matter to me if you have a 10,000 pound winch, a 50,000 pound winch, or a 100,000 pound winch, you still cannot pull more than 2,500 pounds on this particular winch line in this scenario. In my research, it appears that most synthetic ropes on these smaller winches, 4,500 pound to uh, 6,000 pound that are on most um, side-by-sides will have a braking strength of anywhere between 7,000 pounds and 12,000 pounds. It, it also all depends on the manufacturer's factor of safety. So you got to figure that out so you don't exceed that. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Now, the next thing that I um, I want to talk to you a little bit is called resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Now what is resistance? Well resistance is the force that you need to overcome to set a vehicle in motion. So I want to talk to you about a razor um, or a side-by-side. -side. I'm trying to, it really doesn't matter what it is. So we have a, we have a machine right here and as you can see, um, my art class lessons are really starting to pay off. So here's your razor, and it's, of course it's gotta have an RBO 
uh, cargo rack on the back of it, spare tire, we got all that. So it astounds me how few people actually know how much their machine weighs. And everything that we're doing in winching, we really need to know the weight, the hard number. We need to know how much this thing weighs. And that's typically referred to as, I'm gonna write it up here as the static weight. Oops. And, or the curb weight. That's saying, how much does this vehicle weigh if you were to just set it on the scale? So for just simplicity, for math sakes today, we're going to say that this machine weighs 2,000 pounds. And we're gonna say that the front wheel weighs 1,000 pound, and the rear axle, excuse me, the front axle weighs 1,000 pounds and the rear axle weighs 1,000 pounds. Well, if we were to hook a winch line on this thing and pull it, and we wanna pull it that way, there's a force that we need to overcome to put this vehicle in motion. So there's some basic tools that I wanna give you that, I, that I've learned. So the first one is, is rolling resistance. Rolling resistance. And that is how much force, I'm gonna put some grass under this thing, does it take to put this vehicle in motion? Well, that depends a little bit if it's on hard packed asphalt or if it's out in soft grass. But the number I would like to give you is 10%. So if you hook a, if, if this thing's in neutral and you hook a winch line on it, and you're on a hard packed surface and you put 200 pounds or 10% of force, 200 pounds of force against this vehicle on a flat level surface, it is going to move forward. Now that number could be significantly less depending on how full the air, the tires are, how hard packed the ground is, but at 10%, of the vehicle weight, that machine is going to go forward. So if you hooked your winch line onto this with one single line, remember, golden rule to winching is lines to the load, the force on your vehicle, here, let me just draw a winch, the force on your winch, so we're gonna put one line out, our load is 200 pounds, the load on the winch line is 200 pounds. The working load limit of our winch line from the last, when I talked to you just a minute ago, was 2,500 pounds. So we're well within the working load limit of our winch, and we can hook a single winch line on this and pull it, no problem. Okay, well, because most of us um, don't need to move our, <laughs> side by side when the wheels are free and they rotate freely, we're usually stuck. And that type of resistance is called damaged, or there's a mired resistance as well, but I'm gonna keep it very simple today. So the next one is damaged resistance. And damage is when an axle will not rotate in a normal fashion. Like in the video, you saw us drag that side by side and the front wheels rotated and the back wheel slid. So that means this wheel is in a damaged resistance. And that factor is 66% or times 0.666. So that means this wheel will not rotate in a normal fashion. It's locked and it's going to slide. So we take 1,000 times 0.66, we come up with 666 pounds. So it will take 666 pounds of force to move that vehicle. We also want the front axle to move with it and it's rolling, so this will It'll rotate in a normal fashion. 
Remember rolling resistance is 10%. So we're, I'm gonna write rolling resistance is 10%. Hopefully you can see all that. So 10% of 1,000 pounds, so is 100 pounds. We wanna move these two together. So we add 100 to, to 666, so we got 766 pounds of resistance. If we hook a winch on this and we wanna move, move the vehicle forward in this scenario, we need to move 766 pounds. The working load limit of our wire rope is 2,500 pounds. So when we engage the winch, we're not exceeding the working load limit of our winch line because the load is only 766 pounds. So we can pull this with a single winch line. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Well, there's a lot more we could talk about I feel like um, based on the response of this video, we'll decide whether or not we want to really get elaborate and add some animation. I just wanted to really kind of get the juices going and start people thinking about winching and how much fun there is once you understand the numbers. And incidentally, if you're really dealing with big stuff, all you got to do is add another zero and this 2,000 pound load goes to 20,000 pounds or 200,000. The factors are all the same. You treat every job the same way when it comes to winching. Remember, you got to calculate the weight of your vehicle, calculate the resistance to overcome, calculate your winch lines working load limit, and that'll tell you how many lines to the load you need before you engage the winch. If you have a positive plan going into a scenario, you're going to have a successful uh, success coming out of it. Well, I know I went on and on and talked. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you out on the trail.